Here's a walkthrough on a nifty trick for just pulling a hand-drawn artwork and turning it into a 3D model. So I've got a, a snowman artwork here that uh, was drawn in Sharpie on a note card. I'm going to put it into a tool called Inkscape over here. You can use File Open, but I'm just going to click and drag it on my Pictures folder. Uh, it'll ask you if you want to embed it and then just say OK. And I'm going to full screen this. And here's my artwork. You can see now that it's Sharpie on a note card. There's a little bit of pencil lines. Uh, you want that high contrast of Sharpie on uh, white paper so that we can trace it easily in this software. And the other thing is you want to make sure that your lines all touch if you want to make like a hollow model, which you'll see a little bit later when I'm talking about where it's just like the line art is what we'll print. Um, but we can fill these voids in some software programs and in other software programs, it's a lot harder to do that. So um, we'll, we'll aim for connect all the lines. So see how the, the mouth touches the nose, the eye touches the nose or the hat, uh, you know, the arms connect to the body somewhere, right? All of the lines overlap somehow. So we have one continuous piece. Um, we'll be able to confirm that in just a moment whenever I uh, use a couple tools here to, to modify this artwork. So first off, this is considered a bitmap. Um, you know, it's a bunch of pixels. Uh, we want a vector that we can turn into a 3D model. So we go to path and we say trace bitmap. And this is actually how Inkscape can turn this into vector art. And by default, um, now, now make sure you have the artwork selected. Notice I have the dashed lines around here. Hit update by default, this threshold value here is pretty good. If you um, don't get what looks like your whole artwork, crank up this value here, you'll get more stuff right because it, it's going to uh, pull in more if you crank down the threshold maybe you got too much like how i did you can get rid of some of that excess but uh, i actually prefer just use the default because you'll notice that when i cranked it down it's hard to see in this little preview but it got a little spotty on my lines and i prefer it to you know be be full because what i'm going to do in just a moment is going to get rid of that excess uh garbage that came in so hit okay once you have that uh, preview where you want it close out this box and then now I have my um, vector art and my photo as two separate pieces. So delete your photo, get rid of that. And you can see um, that I have some speckles here and some other stuff, this piece on the side. But that didn't really worry me because what I'm gonna do in just a moment here is gonna get rid of all of that. And that's to take this bucket tool. And this, this is not a necessary step if you get a really clean trace, but this is useful because you probably won't get a clean trace. Um, you'll probably have some rough edges. So if you zoom in, you'll notice that things are bumpy. Um, you know, some parts are kind of thin, right? Just because of the, the line uh, thinning out. Uh, what I want to do is use this bucket tool to help kind of clean that up. So I use this bucket tool. Now by default, you're probably going to have closed gaps set to none. You want to switch that to small. This will help close in dots like how I have this little, little white dot in this hat. Um, go back to the bucket tool here. Uh, grow and shrink. Uh, I usually do at least 0.5. Um, threshold here, by default, I think it's pretty low. Uh, if you crank it up, it helps. Uh, so, so let me show you what it looks like doing a low threshold versus a high threshold. So I'll do this real low. And um, it's it's not as generous in, um, see how I have like a lot of black shown through there, even though I had a decent bit of grow shrink, right? Uh, let me back this up. I'm going to crank up my threshold, click on it again. And now when I zoom it in, you can see that I have almost none of that black showing through. So I like to do this with a little bit of a high threshold. Um, and now I can separate, there's a lot of steps of just separating two pieces apart, see that I have, have my artwork the way I want it now, and all of that excess stuff is gone. Now there's still some thin points here, like right here where it connects to the nose. Uh, there's an easy way to check this. Think about how big your model is going to be when you print it, and then we'll make a... Uh, piece of, of, I'll make a little circle on here, that's the diameter of uh, the nozzle and see if anything's too thin to be printed. So this is, um, at the moment, 430 millimeters tall. Uh, hit this lock here to lock the aspect ratio and let's knock it down to, I think 90 millimeters is plenty for a little decoration of a snowman. I'm gonna zoom in on them down here. And uh, again, you know, where I'm worried is, is right here where it looks a little thin, here where it looks a little thin. And what you can do to confirm if it's gonna be printable is draw yourself a circle, uh, use control, and you can get it to lock the width and height um, to be the same. And you can make this 0.4, which is the diameter of your standard 3D printer nozzle, and uh, make it a contrasting color so you can easily see it. And click and drag it around and see, you know, is there anywhere that looks thinner than your little dot that you just made? So, you know, I'm pretty convinced that, um, you know, my nozzles, uh, you know, 
0.4 this is going to be able to draw you can see as i i'm, I'm dragging the artwork <laughs> instead of the dot but you get the idea here right that that actually is thicker than my nozzle di diameter uh so it will be printable but um usually 0.4 is not enough really you want have at least 0.8 so that you have at least two lines drawn so change this to 0.8 and as long as everything is wider than that, so you can see that this is kind of pushing my luck here. So what do I do if it's it's not quite wide enough? Uh, all you gotta do is do another bucket fill. So I'm gonna zoom this out. And remember that my bucket has a grow and shrink. I have it at 0.5, it's probably plenty. So I hit you know, bucket fill on here. Now, how can I tell that it got bigger? with the new fill, which just happens to be in blue, so I changed my color to blue. Hit page down, notice that I can see my blue border around everything. It definitely is bigger than what my red was, so let's delete my red. My blue is what I'm keeping. Um, it doesn't matter if it's not centered or um, not in the bottom corner whenever you go to import this. Um, you know, it'll just be fine in the other uh, editors we're gonna use. But if you are particularly interested in centering it or, or whatever you wanna do, go right ahead now because we're gonna save it and now we're gonna go use it in a 3D modeling program. So I'm gonna call it snow, saves as snow.svg, and I'm gonna to go to uh, Tinkercad first and just show that this works like importing SVG in Tinkercad. So um, hit import, and this is why I said, you know, it's important to have all those line be, lines be overlapping somehow, because um, here I have what is basically the line art of what I, what I made. So, um, Looks pretty good. Actually, probably is a pretty neat little print. I just need to draw a little loop on it, and I'm 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 good to go. In on shape, I can do a little more, but I can't use a um, SVG. So actually, I, I pulled it in earlier as a DXF. I'm going to go ahead and delete this though, so I can walk through the steps. Um, go back to uh, Inkscape here, and you want to save this as a, a DXF file. So hit save as DXF. Hit save. And this is where you have to make sure you have the right options selected. One of these is usually checkmarked by default. Make sure they're both unchecked, base unit inches, and hit OK. Uh, if you have those other ones checked, your geometry comes in a little weird and on shape, and it doesn't look quite right. Um, so what we do is we use the plus sign here. We import the DXF, so it uploads it. And um, I'm just going to get rid of my other notifications there. And uh, we pick Sketch. We select the plane. So, so I'm sketching on the top plane. Uh, N will orient the camera so you're looking at it from a top-down view. I use this insert DXF option and now I select that artwork. So I zoom this in and you can see that I now have my line art. This is much more of a you know, traditional CAD program than Tinkercad. Hit green check to finish the sketch. I'm now in the uh, toolbar where I have the extrude option. I can select my um, shape that just like what I had in Tinkercad. Now I currently am in inches, which is usually not my preferred units for 3D printing, but I'm just gonna do a 0.1 inch uh, height uh, just to illustrate the point here. Uh, you know, there's my sort of, uh, you know, outline cut of a ready to print 3D model. And if you're doing this in uh, Tinkercad, I'd probably recommend you flatten it a decent bit. Um, this is a nice thickness, right, for this little kind of cutout style thing. Um, here's where on shape has the advantage. So instead of me only being able to do my line art, in um, uh, on shape, I can actually go back and uh, also give a thickness to all of these voids in the middle. So my sketch went invisible after I hit the uh, extrude there. So I gotta turn my sketch back on and I can now uh, use this extrude feature again and select the voids. Now you can see this standing up taller than my line art, which I obviously don't want. So make that 0 0.05 so to 0 0.1 inches. Uh, and now I'm gonna select all of those voids that uh, were in my model. Um, but are in my sketch as actual you know, lines that I can I can you know point to and, and select and sometimes it's fun just to leave like one or two of these voids because it gives some dimension but um, anyways I'm just going to select them all just to uh, show that now I have a model that I went ahead and make my sketch invisible uh, just has the raised line art and a smooth um, you know. Um, Bit of plastic here for where those voids were. So this looks a little more solid uh, than having the, the hollow cut out like you do in Tinkercad. But what's funny is I actually kind of like this style um, where the, the uh, a cutout because it prints faster and it just has a really cool look uh, whenever you print this. If you do this in Tinkercad, by the way, I, I highly encourage you, um, you know, I think 
whole centimeter is a little much. Uh, probably would just at like five millimeters. Um, and give yourself a good loop at the top so you can put a hook through it uh, and hang it. And that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed.